Zell boy army, how are we doing today? I hope your week in league went well. I hope it was spicy. Please let me know in the comments below how you got on. I hit 27 on my Xbox team and my PS team. Played probably around 17 to 18 hours of week in league. These warriors needed to win 10 of their last 11 games. 10 of the last 11 to get Elite 1. They pulled through, won a penalty shootout in the penultimate game. In the final game, we were 2-0 down. We managed to turn it around. So hopefully, some spicy rewards coming on Thursday. I think mean, that would be a good video. Two lots of Elite 1 Team of the Season rewards. But, today's video, the reason you're here, we're looking at the second man press, right stick switching. It's going to be a combination of showing you some of the tactics behind pressing, but then I'll show you gameplay clips and I'll explain to you how you press, tips on right stick switching, and how the second press works exactly in game. It's something that a lot of people have been asking me about. It's an important element of the game, so I'll be teaching you more about that today. Any questions about it, please let me know in the comments below. But I think it's something that now more than ever on this FIFA is really important. So, we're going to start with the tactics. Anyone who's watched this channel a lot will know I really like looking at the tactics into FIFA. I think it's an important part of the game. Um, I don't use my attacking tactics. So, the main things that affect pressing on the game are the defensive style and probably the depth. So, drop back. In this one, your players basically don't press at all. As soon as they lose the ball, your team just run backwards and literally try drop back into an organised shape and position. So this one, you won't really be able to press at all with this. So I don't generally recommend using drop back at the start of a game. Balanced. This is kind of a combination of press on heavy touch and drop back, I'd say. The team don't press too much in this, but you can still press in it. I like this one and think it's pretty useful. This is what I start in. Press on heavy touch. Basically, if you game, if the game seems to think that your opponents put themselves into a bad position that you can capitalise on, your players will go a bit more aggressive, try win the ball off of them. Press after possession loss. This one's basically the Pep Guardiola philosophy. When your team uh, loses the ball and your opponents have it, it takes seven seconds for your opponents to get the ball under control and get the shape. That's Pep Guardiola's philosophy that he started at Barcelona. So for about, literally there it says, for about seven seconds after you lose the ball, your team will all out press to try and win the ball off your opponents before they get it into, um, they get the ball under control. And then last, constant pressure. You can basically put constant pressure in game by putting team press. Constant pressure is the same as turning team press on. Team press, I think, is down and left. Overload ball side and team press are either down, left, down, right. I think team press is down and left. So if in-game you want to quickly get constant pressure on, basically, you press down and left to turn it on. This one, basically, everyone is all over the place. Out and out pressure. Constant pressure for me. Team press is crazy. It makes the opponents lose 50-50s more. Your opponent's passing stats get worse. Their composure stats get worse. It's a bit too OP in my opinion, but it does drain stamina. However, on a recent patch, they changed it so it doesn't drain anywhere near as much stamina. So, constant pressure is pretty strong, but you can't do it for the whole game. My general way I play is I start on the balanced formation. Uh, well, I start on the defensive one, but I play balanced, so I can still press a bit. If I'm losing a game after about 55-60 minutes, I will go to my constant pressure. And if I'm winning a game late on, where people are obviously going to be putting team press on against me. They're going to be on constant pressure. Then I go to my drop back and possession. Keeping the ball against the pressure, possession is quite useful. But I don't like possession other than for that. Then you also have the um, width. I like having high width when I'm trying to press. Because a lot of the time when you're trying to press, it's because your opponent's time wasting. High width allows you to get out wide and stop them switching the ball. And then high depth obviously is a big part of pressing because if you sat deep, they have a lot more space. If you push them high up the pitch, then you've got a lot less space or your opponent has a lot less space to keep the ball. But you are more susceptible to being opened up and getting through balls played in behind against you. The only other re thing really is um, the defensive position and then do you want aggressive, conservative, normal interceptions? I don't change these. 
I keep my interceptions on normal across the board. You could experiment with aggressive, but I don't think it makes much of a difference at all, and it drains stamina. Whereas conservative doesn't really save much stamina, but maybe slightly worse. So I just leave it on normal. We're going to get into some gameplay clips where I explain how to second man press and talk about pressing on this game. Okay, I'm going to show you some clips from a game that I was playing against another pro player where I kept a clean sheet. We're going to start by talking about switching. There are two types of switches. L1 on PlayStation or LB on Xbox. That's the first one. That switches to the man closest to the ball. We'll explain that one first, but we'll say the other one. The other one is right stick switching, and that tends to be the one that most people struggle with. We'll start, though, with the L1 switching. L1 will switch you to the man nearest the ball. I'm already controlling the man nearest the ball in, in this clip here. So this indicator here is whoever I'm controlling. We all know that the more like darker colored uh, colored inversion, that's who you're controlling. It's vital in my opinion for getting better at pressing, learning how to use the second man press, switching to use the second defender indicator. A lot of people actually have this turned off. You need it turned on in my opinion. So this is who I'm controlling. The second defender indicator is this one here. It's slightly more I'm trying to get it so it doesn't cover it. See it there. It is slightly more grayed out. You can still see the red triangle. It's not quite as big as that. And it's a bit grayed out, but it's pretty easy to see in game. When this is above a defender's head, if you press L1, you will switch to that defender. When it comes to right stick switching and L1 switching, my general rule is I will use right stick anywhere. We'll, we'll, move, we'll keep moving the clip a bit. We'll let the clip go. I will use right stick switching probably from about here and up from there on the pitch. When I get around this area here, Oh, I've got a follow on Twitch. Thank you. If you've not already watched my Twitch, please subscribe. Subscribe? <laughs> please follow my Twitch. Please check a link in the description below. If you want to subscribe, obviously appreciate that. I'm so used to on YouTube videos talking about subscribing to the YouTube. Anyway, around the edge of the box, this is where I start to use L1. When you get to the box and you've got a lot of players congested, you want to be using L1 to quickly switch to the man nearest the ball to step in and make tackles. When there's like when it's around the box and you have a lot of players around the box, you don't want to be using right stick because it'll take too long to get the man there. But where we're in the middle of the pitch and there's big gaps between the players, this is where I want to be using right stick switching. Unfortunately, there's not any massive things you can do to e instantly improve at right stick switching. A lot of it in my opinion, just comes from practice. The general way that I, w I think the best way you could practice if you really want to get better at it is get a friendly against a friend and ask him to just keep the ball and you just practice right stick switching when he holds possession. And you can take it in turns to do that. That is probably the easiest way to get better. At. Other than that, it comes by playing games, practicing it. At first, you will be worse for using right stick switching. But long term, it will make you far better, and it is a major part of becoming a top player on FIFA. One of the biggest skill gaps in FIFA is player switching. Let's move the clip here. You see there, soon as he passed it to him, and R9, and he's got to my defence, I used L1 because he's near my box, so I can switch. If we go back a bit, where it's here, you can see there, I, I switched to him, so I could move him a bit. Switch to him. There, he wasn't the L1 player. He was, but I right stick switched to him, so I could pull him down. In the middle of the pitch, I use right stick switching to constantly change players, because I want to be constantly changing players to pull my team into position. You see here. You can still use L1 sometimes, but like there, I pressed L1, I might have even right stick, and then I went straight to him. I'm trying to constantly use right stick to pull my players into position. There, moved him into position. 
there L1. Once it gets past about there, I start to use the L1 because around the box, you need to use that more. Okay, we'll get another clip. In this clip here, I want you to take note of who I'm controlling, who the second defender indicator is above, and how the player moves. Here, I'm controlling the edge of the box. The general way I like to defend when people get near my box is control a player and hold this area here. If they move wide, I'll try switch and cover it, but use the second man to keep them under pressure. So many people don't use the second man press, but the second man press allows you to just put a little bit more pressure on the opponent so they don't have a lot of time on the ball, but you can still control a man around here and to protect this area of the pitch. You can see here, he's got the second man above him. So I'm controlling him now. I controlled him because I don't want to see ourselves to just waltz past my fullback. Yeah, I'm switching there. When they get around this area, I'm constantly switching to the, a player because I don't want them to get a lot of time on the ball. You can see here, Mbappe is just ch chasing them around. It might be Richarlison then. But he's chasing them around, trying to put more pressure on him. See there, I switch, cover that area. Makes it a lot harder. So around the box, you want to use a combination of R1 or RB on Xbox to get a player to second man press. And then L1 switching around the box to stop your opponent being able to pass it in someone quick. L1 will switch you straight away to the man nearest to the ball and stop them being able to get a lot of time in the box. One thing with the second man press that is important to note that a lot of people don't realise is right now, Marcelo has this indicator above him. If I hold the second man press button R1, with Mar now, Marcelo will start moving towards the ball. If I keep holding the ball at the button down and he switches it up there, the indicator will move to either Butragueno or my right back. But as long as I hold it down, Marcelo will keep chasing. So I think some people think with the second man press, you're just supposed to keep it held down. If you keep holding it down, the player that started the second man press will just keep trying to get to follow the ball the whole way. But if he's moved the ball 30 yards over there, you don't want this player chasing there because he's never going to get there quick enough. So to use the second man press properly, when your opponent passes the ball, if the player who's supposed to be pressing, or is pressing even, is nowhere near the ball, you let go of the second man press and you press it again. Because effectively, when you switch the ball, the man who's second man pressing won't be near the ball anymore. So you let go and you press it again. Just watch here how it, when he passes it, it changes. So there, it's changed to him now. If I had been controlling it, he'd still be, um, if I'd have just kept hold of what he'd still be doing it. So there, he was doing it. What I like to do with the second man press is I like to let the AI get close and just put them under a bit of pressure. The AI will rarely tackle someone with the second man press. It used to be a lot stronger, but they don't tackle as much unless they get to the box really now. I like to use second man press to just give my opponent less space, control the CDM to cut the passing lines, and then if I see a chance to switch to the player who's second man pressing and quickly get the ball, I will then press L1 and switch in. With them. See there, I was controlling him, a right stick switch there because the ball's not in a dangerous position just so I could get him there and put him into a better position. See there, Butch Aguero is following because I've let go of the button and pressed it to him. So Butch follows. I thought I might be able to tackle him so I switched to him. Butch is now pressing again because I've let go of done that. I let go of it there. I let go of it because it's gone to him. So now he's going to press. This is one of the reasons that switching has quite a high skill gap compared to some other areas of the game because there is a lot of micromanagement. You constantly have to be letting go of the second man press, seeing who the new player that will press is. You have to be constantly ready to quickly use L1 switch when they get round the box, but then also in the middle of the pitch to cut passing lanes effectively. And by cutting passing lanes effectively, you can put your opponent under pressure. You have to be right stick switching quite quick. You see there, I switched to him, so my opponent couldn't just run at me there. And then Atal now is the second man press. He's just mimicking him. He, he won't dive in and get the ball, but he just means that because I'm holding second man press, he can't just turn there and run past the AI. 
Then I switch to try to put him under a bit more pressure. See what I mean? I'm constantly trying to just make my opponent put make a mistake, give him a little bit less time on the ball, force him into doing something bad. You don't have to win the ball back straight away, but for a combination of quick switching, using the second man press effectively, putting your opponent into bad positions, you can win the ball back and make it a lot harder for your opponent. What a lot of good players do that I find, when I'm saying good players have been like gold 2, gold 1 who aren't quite at that elite level yet, is they'll control the CDMs, cover this area, but they won't use the second man press at all. And when they're not using the second man press, what that does is it just gives you so much time to keep the ball around the middle. Using the second man press, okay, it won't get the ball back straight away, but it just puts your opponents in worse positions. And if you can put your opponent in a worse position, make him feel like he has less time on the ball, he will probably play worse. A few tips with right stick switch and weight can come in handy. When people try and go down the line, you can quickly use, if you see that the line's opening up, it's a very good option to quickly switch to a fullback with a couple of right stick touches. I recommend, by the way, for right stick switching using the player relative. The ball relative, I think, especially in delay, is going to be a lot harder. I think player relative is very simple to use. Player relative effectively means that if the ball's here, I used, uh, so I switched there to Boutra to try to stop that. With Marcelo, I would have just put my analog stick maybe 30 degrees to get it to there. Player relative for me is a lot simpler to use. Um, the ball relative, I just think is a bit of a mess. I wouldn't be using that. But you have to use a combination of right stick around the middle. When the ball gets to here, use L1 to switch to the man nearest the ball. But here when I'm trying to organize the team, it's a lot of right stick switching. So here, see there, as soon as he gets there, Watch this. I'm controlling him. As soon as he gets there, the indicator's above him, so it means that when I press L1, I will switch to him and step in there. If I don't press L1, if I press right stick, because it's so close to other players, there's a chance it might not work, I press L1 and I step in. In the box, L1, middle of the pitch, cutting the wings out, right stick. One thing to be careful with the second man press is don't use it to pull your defenders out. You don't want to be pulling your defenders out of position with a second man press. You want to use the second man press with your striker and midfield. Boys, I hope this has helped. I'm sorry that there's not a simpler way of telling you how to get better at right stick switching. It's just, it's just something that takes a lot of practice. It's very circumstantial, but hopefully these tips will help you a lot. Hopefully the second man press has been explained a lot better to you now so you understand it. And now you know the better times to be using right stick L1. Thank you very much for watching this video, boys. If there's any other types of tutorials, tactics, player videos you want to be seeing in the next few weeks, please let me know. I'm always looking for content that you boys want. One thing I would say is don't ask for squad builders of exact values because I'm not just building you a free team for your budget. Boys, I appreciate the support so much so much though we're nearly at 12,000 subscribers which is crazy the growth's been phenomenal i appreciate all the likes comments encouraging words people turning it into the stream you boys really do mean a lot to me thank you for making the grind worth it have a great evening